Um, so then race is a legal fiction. What does that mean? So first of all, what is fiction? Not untrue. Untrue, right? It's made up? Right. So what does it mean to have a legal fiction? I know there's a lot of smart people in here. Who's in the legal profession? None of us. You are. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put this on me. <laughs> so it's something that's made up in the law, right? Um, judges, legislators, etc. Um, so, um, so race was actually not created until the 1700s in terms of the ways that we and our laws have um, applied them and come to understand them. So, um, not created in North America until the 1700s. Um, this, uh, prior to that, it was about cultural differences rather than biological differences. So, for example, there were Africans who came to the United States before slavery. And there were immigrants from, we didn't call them immigrants then, right? Um, folks who came from other countries, um, whether <coughs> European countries or other countries, that were just, you know, coming because they were looking for a better life. And so everyone was basically on an equal playing field except for who had wealth and who didn't. So if um, I'm an African and there's another person there who is from um, England and we're both poor, we saw our cultural differences, but not necessarily that they had to do with biological inferiority differences. So that came later. Um, so Africans have the same status as indentured servants. Um, and indentured servants, as you all know, were often um, poor European immigrants um, who um, basically had to work their way out of the, um, the cost of coming to the new country. And then when they worked off that cost as servants, they could then be full-fledged um, people without ties to their employer. Um, didn't work the same with Africans, right? So we're going to look at that. In 1526, um, Africans were enslaved to cultivate North American land. And so the question I have for the group are questions, why weren't Europeans successful in enslaving American Indians? And why didn't they just use white indentured servants? In other words, why go all the way to Africa to get slaves? What are your guesses? So they were easy to hunt. Okay, so um, were they easier to hunt than uh, American Indians? Some, some, somewhat. Yeah, because the American Indians were were once I believe that once the white men were there, they realized that we have to have weapons against these people. Mm -hmm. So I think it was it was their cultural to say, okay, you know, now we have, and they already had weapons against each other mm -hmm. in place, mm -hmm. and they weren't, you know, they were prepared then to have some. Some fighting. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so it was Indian land, so they knew their land, right? And so even though genocidal practices eventually drastically reduced the numbers, it, it was harder to enslave American Indians, right? Or indigenous peoples. Um, they had the home field advantage. Right, exactly. Whereas slaves didn't, right? Africans didn't. So Africans were brought from to a land they didn't know. And imagine if you know, someone beamed us up and dropped us off into another country. You know, where would we go? How do we get our food? Especially if we're there without our family. So you have the whole, you know, disassociation from your land, which makes it easier then to make you subservient. Um, and they didn't use indentured servants because there weren't, you know, they, there were, they were eventually um, could work themselves out of bondage. So, and also, of course, mirrored images of the people who were um, um, enslaving or, or keeping in bondage other people. So here's a question. Which country received half of the 12.5 million slaves sent into the New World? Which country do you, do you guess? South America or? Okay, somewhere in South America. Any specific countries, I guess. <laughs> Brazil. 
Brazil. That's your instincts. <laughs> so Brazil received half of all of the slaves from the New World, right? And so it's important for us in America to kind of remember that, that a big bulk of the slaves went to um, the next in, in line were Cuba, right, with 700, uh, 700, 779,000, Haiti, then Mexico, then the US, and then Peru, right? So there are these other legacies of shipping people, Africans specifically, to other countries. Um, and so now let's kind of stick with um, more of the Southern Hemisphere and look at um, just kind of racial categorizations of people. Um, and then, so for example, for the Spaniards now, for looking at South Americans, so they're conquerors in, in that area, um, they would actually put themselves at the top of the hierarchy, right? And so if they were to intermix with um, Indios, um, so uh, Amerindians, one of three, or considered one of three pure races, so these would be the Inca, the Aztec, etc. they were then eventually assimilated into Spanish nobility. So in other words, you can work your way out of being at the bottom. And if you notice at the bottom, we go through, um, so for example, mestizos were um, one Spanish parent, one Indian parent, um, mulatos, Spanish, and black African ancestry. At the bottom were uh, negros, Africans, the third original race, but also considered down on the, the lower pole. Um, so the Spaniards considered only three original races. So the Spaniards, um, Indians and Africans. So everyone else <laughs> was left out on this racial hierarchy. So um, right now I'm showing just some pictures of um, some kind of postcards home from the conquered areas back to Spain. So this is a picture from 1770 um, depicting a uh, Mexican or Spaniard um, and a mestiza then produced a castiza child which again, this is kind of ludicrous, right? That there's all of these breaking down of, hey, you, if you mix with one group, this is how your kids end up, et cetera. And um, I'm not sure if we can turn on, off this front light a little bit. <coughs> Oops, that's the back. That's the front one. Maybe you can see that a little better. Um, and um, so here's a picture of a mixture between a black and an Indian and saying it makes a wolf or a lobo or a dog child, right? So these kind of inherited uh, messaging isn't just necessarily unique to the United States in terms of who gets lowest on the, the, you know, the, the racial hierarchy, but it's about conquering and then, and then who gets conquered and how their identity becomes, um, you know, reclassified.